Hey there folks, this is Joey. Um, I'm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania during the quarantine and um, I've been giving banjo lessons for a few years and I figured this might be a good time that uh, if folks are sitting at home and happen to have a banjo laying around that they don't know what to do with, I figured I would uh, do a really basic sort of beginner banjo lesson for the internet. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be just like, as if you picked up a banjo and never touched one before kind of thing. Um, really basic starting off point lesson. Um, so yeah, we'll get into it and just kind of uh, take it step by step. Um, so this is your banjo. Just wanna set the pot kind of right, right in your lap, right in between your legs. And then kind of take this at a 45 degree angle. You want to have, hopefully you have an armrest there. You want your elbow to kind of rest right on there. <clears throat> and then this hand kind of holding the neck. The banjo is tuned to an open G. So our notes go as follows, starting from the top. G, D, G, B, D. Um, the phrase I used to remember that is, good drinks go belly down. It's a silly one, but for some reason it's stuck. Um, you can make up your own if you'd like. So, let's just talk about basic strumming first. I'm striking, we're, I'm gonna teach you claw hammer, very basic claw hammer. Um, I don't know a ton about bluegrass style or three finger or anything like that, so this will just be a claw hammer lesson for now. Um, claw hammer is describing the way that your hands kind of look when you're playing this style. So we're gonna make sort of a claw and that's gonna stay pretty tight. You don't wanna deviate from that too, too much. And strumming down using the top of my pointer finger nail. Um, it's got nail polish on it right now, but eventually it'll come off from playing the banjo. <clears throat> and when we do the strum, we want most of our torque coming from our wrist here. So I'm not using my fingers to do this motion. Not like that, but like this. And when I do that, my thumb is resting on the drone string here, on the very top string. And that's where it's going to live. I want it to stay there. Folks who are used to playing guitar kind of are used to doing this motion and going all the way through. I'm going to advocate that you do not do that. I'm just going to let that live right there. So as I'm strumming down, I'm using my wrist, and my thumb is staying right in this little home. And as I strum, it just stays right there and catches on that. Adds, puts a little tension on that drone string and allows it to just rest there. Strumming through the bottom four strings. And just getting a nice resonant full strum. So we'll start with that. Talking about our left hand. Um, banjo is tuned to an open G, so when I'm playing it open, I'm playing a G chord. That means that any bar chord is going to give you a major chord. Um, so without diving too much, and I don't know a ton about like music theory or anything like that, but we're starting here at an open G. If we go one fret, second fret, that's going to give us an A major chord. Um, when we're doing a bar chord, I'm going to kind of place place that finger right right at the fret, but not on the fret, right before it. And then I like to kind of turn the bone inside my finger to its edge a little bit. So you're using that kind of rigid part of your finger right here. Um, I like to say I like to be able to hold my banjo by the bar cord. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. My thumb is around back, applying pressure. And every time you're trying a new chord shape or anything like that, just strum each, each note and make sure everything's ringing out. If something feels a little muted, just be like, what's going on there? Investigate. Oh, I'm on the fret. I need to move back a little bit. So I'm going to show you specifically, and we're going to work with just G, C, D, um, easy folk chords. And you can play a ton of songs if you just know those three chords. So if an open is a G, then we have an A, B flat, 
B and C lives right here at the fifth fret. That's where your tuning peg will be for your drone string. So that's a C chord, a C bar chord. And if we go two up from that, one is C sharp or D flat, and then D. So that's on our seventh fret. So that there is G, C, D, G. Coming out of tune a little bit, it's a little chilly here. <clears throat> so I like to do an exercise, you can play along with me or maybe just get the hang of it if you want, but we're just going to play G, C, D with that basic strum and just get an idea of like rhythmically how this is going and get our hands moving around a little bit. So we'll start at open G, C, D, G. Again, the G, C, D, open G. You'll notice my right hand, that thumb is always staying right there. I'm using my wrist to strum. I'm strumming, hitting the, hitting the strings with my pointer finger nail. So let's go back to the right hand for a second. Um, I'm going to use. The, I'm going to start to incorporate the drone string here, which is what gives claw hammer its sound. Um, it's incorporating the drone string. So every other strum, I'm going to add a pluck to the drone string. It'll sound like this, and then I'll explain it a little further. Now what's happening here is I'm going, the, the drone comes in on the and, so it's an offbeat. I like to talk about like what my foot is doing if I'm tapping along to the rhythm. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and... So when the drone is being played, my boot is up in the air rather than tapping down on the beat, if that makes sense. It might not make sense to everybody, but that's how I think of it. Um, when I'm plucking that drone string, I'm not really hammering on it and my thumb again it's not it's not coming down here I'm not playing and this is not going straying away from its from its home there on the drone whenever I'm strumming down I'm kind of creating a tension with my thumb on the drone string and I'm just sort of releasing that tension I'm just letting it go um, so we're not super aggressively playing it outwards or up we're not like slapping a bass we're also not coming down past here. We're just applying pressure whenever that weight of our hand is coming down, I'm just releasing it. These are all pretty subtle motions, so a lot of times I, I, I feel like folks who are just learning, like, their hands want to do a whole bunch, and their, thumbs, their thumb wants to start rocking out over here, or their fingers want to do a bunch of the work. This is all real subtle, so my wrist is coming down. Thumbs just releasing very subtle circular motions, and my hand is remaining in that claw shape no matter what. My thumb is staying in its little home right here. You can see my band just worn down from where my thumb lives. So let's incorporate that into a GCD chord pattern. So we're just gonna say open G, C. So now we'll go jump back to the left hand for a second. We're gonna learn, we learned a major bar chord just now. So now that means that we can play any major chord up and down the neck. G, A, E, C, E, E, F, and then your double dots um, on, your on the neck of your banjo will be a G, that's your octave G. Same chord. 
Um, I would suggest for like people just learning to like even put little sticky notes on each fret telling you what major chord that creates. It's just a way to like start to get to know and get familiar with your banjo and what notes are being played where. Um, and then obviously there's variations of these chords that you can find other places on the neck, but um, we'll go into that a little bit at the end, but for now we're just going to do super basic bar chords. Um, so now I'm going to teach you a minor bar chord. Um, we'll start with A minor. So that looks like this. And this is a position that your hand is gonna be frustrated with trying to do, because it's not used to doing this, but it looks like middle finger on the top string, then your ring finger here, and then your pointer finger on the third fret there, and then your pinky on the second. So that's. Looks like that. Um, and you can look up chord charts and all that good stuff online too. But, um, so this motion, this chord shape is a basic minor bar chord. And if you'll notice, we, we know that our A major chord is here. And that this is an A minor. So the same thing applies. We can move this up and down all around the neck. Th this is A minor. We know that this is B minor and C minor. Um, all you're doing with the shape is flatting the third, which creates a minor chord. Um, something I like to tell folks is like, when I'm going back and forth on this chord shape, I would just practice that motion of on, off, on. That way your fingers get used to kind of coming back to that shape. And also, we want to get in the habit of Every time I'm playing an open chord or playing a different chord, I don't want to reset my whole hand like this. Because then it's more difficult to come back. So when I'm releasing that chord shape to play a G, I'm just opening up my hand a little bit and taking the tension off the strings, but they're still hovering right there, ready to come back whenever it's time. Um, so now, technically, we can play any minor chord as well. We can play any major and minor chord just like that. Um, we know C minor is here, and that would make this D minor. We'll do some more with that shape in a little bit, but uh, my suggestion in practicing and learning the banjo would be to find songs. This is how I learned at least, is like the way that I have been able to learn music is just by learning songs that I want to play or sing. Um, so you know every major and minor chord at this point, um, you know how to do it. So work on moving around the neck a little bit and then find some songs that you want to sing that are pretty basic and you know, a couple chords for the song and learn how to play them. Um, and that'll just like, you want to make practicing fun in some way. So you want to keep doing it and sitting and like hammering down scales or, or practicing in a way that like is not exciting to you is you, you'll have a, a bigger tendency to just kind of like, be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, at least that's my experience. <clears throat> so we're gonna come back down here to the right hand. And now we're gonna learn just the basic, we're kind of putting all the pieces together to learn basic claw hammer. So n we know this pattern. Now we're gonna replace that first strum with a single note strike. And that sounds like this, and I'll explain it. So what I'm doing is I'm using that claw to just, instead of do a full strum, I'm just picking one note and striking it. So before we even get to the whole pattern, I think it's good to practice just starting on the on the D string, which is your second string from the top, and just kind of striking each one. And come back up. That way you get in that 
kind of feel out how that feels for your hand to make that motion. Again, my wrist is doing the work here. I'm not using my finger. Because that's just going to get all muddied up. It's a quick, I think they're like snake bite. It's a quick. It's my wrist doing that. And my thumb does not leave its home. Keep that thumb nice and tight in there and keep these all tight, subtle, but kind of precise motions. Um, so once you feel comfortable with like playing that single note rather than a full strum, once you kind of feel that out, now we're going to replace that first strum in our pattern of claw hammer with just one strike. And we'll start on the G string, which is this middle string. Um, and we're going to just strike that single note. We're sticking with that same rhythmic pattern. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. You don't want to break this up into three sections, like one, two, which I think is a tendency sometimes for, for folks just learning. Um, we're 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 uh, sticking to that same rhythm of one, two, and the drone being the and. And that's basic claw hammer, that's all there is to it. And obviously there's flourishes and more fancy pants stuff that you can do, but that, that motion is what translates. It's all just that same pattern, just sped up a little bit. So um, let's take that same claw hammer pattern and we'll apply that to our GCD exercise. G. C, D, G, G, C, D, G. Again, to, um, Something I think is good to keep in mind when you're learning is when I'm is how to how to make switching chords as easy and simple as you can, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a little bit. But uh, when I'm going from C to D, I don't need to reset my whole hand and then bring it back on the D. I'll just slide it up two frets. That's all. So that is basic claw hammer, the motions of it. And that's the pattern, the rhythm that you'll take as you continue to learn. Um, I'm going to show you another chord progression up here. And we'll throw in a couple other quick chord shapes. Um, but they're relatively easy to navigate. Because they're all kind of based in the same position. Uh, and then, you know, I'd encourage you once you feel comfortable with like what your right hand is doing. And your left hand's moving around a little bit and getting familiar with itself learn some other chord shapes and always keep in mind that any chord shape can be adjusted and moved up and down the neck. Um, I'll, I'll just touch on that briefly. Um, when we learn an F shape, which looks like this, you can also play a G and so on, A, C, D. Um, so that means, I just, I just like to encourage folks who are just learning to make sure they're learning their chord shapes in a way that they understand that they can be moved all around. So I can play G like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. And those are all the same chord, but it allows you to voice things differently and move around. And depending on where you are on the neck of your banjo, you can find the chord you're looking for or the chord that you wanna play, um, regardless of where you are. It's gotta be somewhere close by. Um, so we'll learn this little progression which I like to teach to folks who are just learning because it gets these fingers doing some stuff and moving around and it's kind of pretty and it's nice to practice with. Um, so the progression is gonna be A minor, C, E minor, G. There's 
a couple of chord shapes in there that we haven't learned, learned yet or talked about, so I'll go over them. When we start with A minor, we learned that we're here. All I'm gonna do is lift up my ring finger from the fret, and now I'm playing a C. So that looks like. And this one's open, so it's two, open, one, two. And then from here, I'm gonna play an E minor by just lifting up my pointer finger. That's E minor. So that looks like two, open, open, two. And then we know G is just open. Now again, like I was saying before, it's important here to like, you don't want your hands to go loosey-goosey all over the place because then you're gonna try to get back to that A minor and be like, where do my fingers go? What am I supposed to do? Um, and it's hard to come back right on the beat. So every time you're switching to a different chord and you're just releasing one of those fingers, but keep them hovered right against, right, right above your strings. So when I'm playing that G, my fingers are right there. So when I come back to A minor, boom, I just gotta throw them right back in the position that they're already in. Um, this is just like sort of an easy chord, sh chord progression to get your fingers used to doing that motion and also learning different shapes that we're gonna, you know, you're gonna eventually learn up and down the neck. Um, so again, that goes like, and wherever you're feeling your comfort level is at on the right hand, practice this progression with that. So if you're still just strumming, that's fine. Or if you've got the bum ditty of claw hammer, ahead and use that but either way practice this progression so I'll go a minor C E minor G back to a minor C E minor That's a nice little progression that you can mess around with. Um, I feel like that's usually, you know, that's a good place to like practice on that stuff and a good, like I said, very basic, very starter um, idea of the banjo. And then uh, from there, like I said, uh, find some songs that you're interested in performing or singing or just, you know, sitting around your house and singing along to. Learn those chords on the banjo and try and play along with it. And then you know, look at some chord charts, learn some different um, chord shapes and start to mess around with those and especially start to mess around with how those different voicings can be moved all along the banjo. Uh, and then, you know, there's tons of other fun stuff to learn too. There's drop thumb and you can learn some finger picking patterns like bluegrass style and it just keeps going on and on and on. So uh, yeah, and if you want to learn more from me, feel free to send me a message or something and reach out and maybe we can do a virtual internet uh, lesson sometime. And that'd be nice too. So, so thanks for tuning in and checking it out. Um, I hope you have fun doodling around with the banjo. I enjoy it. Um, my name is Joey. Average Joey is my music sometimes and hope everybody is staying safe and uh, not driving themselves too mad as they're locked down and playing a banjo could be a nice way to pass the time. So enjoy and thanks for watching.